real bragging rights of the fact that you know what there are no pushovers and confidence is a uh, man of the match goes to I mean Al Badari by the looks of it so according to our statisticians Saudi Arabia to take on Mozambique Morocco to take on Malawi what a tournament it's been on the way touch base with the player of the match and uh, that being Amin al Badawri. the Hercules BS player his goals were important as well that uh, award handed by Toby Lesifund of KZN head of Department of Sports Arts and Culture well played we see El Amin Bidari now confirmation it was uh, 7-2 Malawi Seychelles 8-4 Mozambique and goal in favor of Mozambique South Africa beaten 3-1 uh, by uh, Saudi Arabia and then in this one uh, the Moroccans holding on for a narrow 2-1 win against Tanzania it is semi-final time on Friday make sure you do not miss a beat 2-1 at full time for this one kickoff join us from 2 o'clock more sugar moments coming your way Saudi Arabia's Middle East flair lands at Taguini. North and East African guests Morocco and Tanzania are here for gold. The 2021 champs Mozambique and the host nation Mzansi Africa trust their quality on the sand. This is the Kasafa Beach Soccer Championship 2023. Experience the battle of eight great nations at the South Beach Arena in Durban from 17 to 23 March 2024. Live on SABC Sport on DTT Channel 4. Also available on SABC Plus and SABC Sport.com. Proudly brought to you by SABC Sport. Hello and uh, welcome uh, to Gloomy Pretoria. This is uh, the Nipple Youth World Cup and we have our first match for the day which is Team South Africa versus Namibia. And what you can expect coming up, uh, first off we have South Africa versus Namibia, then later on we will be watching Zambia versus Malawi and finishing it off with Team Namibia again versus Kenya. As you see, this is the log standing after a grueling four days of this tournament, South Africa being on top of the log while Zimbabwe and Malawi fighting for that second spot. And now we are going to Joe. Joe, what's happening down there? Ahead of the match versus South Africa, I'm joined by Namibia head coach, Coach Bobsey. Coach, after that stellar win you had on oh, Tuesday yes. and your rest day, how do you feel? Good morning, everyone. Today is Independence Day for us Namibians. Obviously, we'll miss our president. May his soul rest in peace. About the game on Tuesday against Zimbabwe, really it was a tough game, but we told our ladies it was just simple. Ahead of the match versus Namibia, it's the final match for South Africa in the round. Coach Precious, tell me about how do, what are you doing for this game? Um, definitely getting our lines going, the goals in back to our um, you know, high school. But yeah, I think it's going to be a good game. And I think from, from the, yesterday's game, the girls will just carry on from the speed and the energy. Thank you, coach. Thank you so much. And uh, for the starting line of Namibia, we have uh, Lloyd, Lloyd Cayolo with uh, the girl attack. And we for the second lineup we have team south africa as we can see over there different starting line to what we normally see um team pressure's putting on and uh, we're getting ready for the start of the match and and now we're gonna have one minute for a moment of silence Goalkeeper of Namibia who lost her mother 
as well as President H. Jin Job, and this is the President of Namibia who passed on three weeks ago. Let's observe a moment of silence. We are saying condolences to both the two families and may their soul of the departed rest in peace. The bus And uh, we just had a moment of silence for the president of Namibia who passed away last week and one of the members of Team South Africa's parents, um, the assistant coach Tumza, Tem Tumza Maweni's uh, mother passing away. And uh, as you can see, we have the match on the way. We have Team Namibia versus South Africa. And it's going to be an interesting matchup as we see two of these nations who have shown very good nipple skills and played a very good game in the past two matches that they had. I mean, Namibia had a great match against Zimbabwe two days ago with a one-point win. And uh, Team South Africa dominating their last match yesterday against Malawi, which was expected to be a bit of a final look. But uh, Team South Africa showing their dominance and showing that they're not here to play. They really want to qualify for this Youth Cup going to Gibraltar next year in 2025. Position, South Africa. Talk about a team that's firing on all 12 cylinders. That is Team South Africa with the first match here of the day. It is day five at the Nepal World Youth Cup African Qualifier. South Africa is just continuing their winning streak last night with that win against Malawi. And they will sure want to win six out of six with today's match up against Namibia. But Namibia had a rest day yesterday. And I'm sure excited to see how that matchup will go today because I'm sitting courtside and I'm so up close in person to all the action. So I don't miss a thing. Like Zanay Budenstein getting that starting lineup in the goalkeeper position with Fissa that we know was so dominant so i'm looking forward to see this defensive unit because they brought in fa um, favor in that wing defense and we know how favor is so dangerous and applies so much pressure on the attack of our opposition so this will sure be an exciting matchup now it's 2-1 for south africa back to you in commentary china Oh, thank you, Joe. I mean, talking about a rest day for uh, Team Namibia, they look fresh. That's why they are keeping up with the intensity of uh, Team South Africa, as we see. But it's the beginning stages of the match. Anything can happen. It's 60 minutes. It's the team that is the most consistent that's going to be able to pull off this game. But Team South Africa showing their class and oh, poor Giada Prince Lu taking a bit of a hard knock over there. But yet again, Namibia. Lisa, her backup, her sidekick, Namibia. doing what she does best by finishing off that shot and making sure that Team South Africa stays ahead. Namibia throw in. Oh, favor. Just unable to keep control of that yes, ball, but a good tip from her. Namibia struggling a bit to get that ball through, finding that connection to the, to the shooter. We see Favor doing what she does best on wing defense position, causing that pressure to make sure that they're unable to land circle edge and find that easy connection into their shooter circle. It's very nice to see uh, a bit of a change up in Team South Africa's starting line. We have Andrews, which she is synonymous with playing the goal attack position, but we see her there dominating the wing attack position. Her moves, her skill, her agility, and her his speed to be able to still land a circle edge is phenomenal so to see that she's able to double up on two different positions on wing attack and good attack it's a good options and very lucky coach precious has there with a player like that what the wing defense what the wing defense where you are 
And joining me in commentary is the great Zanele Mtotana, coach of all coaches, well, newly appointed assistant coach of uh, the Spa Pro Tears. Welcome. Thank you so much, Chena. I am excited to be here with you this morning to take our viewers through this one. Uh, which, I mean, I'm really impressed with the way the, uh, Namibia is staying in it. Yes, the baby proteas are leading South by five Africa. goals, but I've really been impressed with the performance that Namibia has been putting out in this competition. They caused that major upset against Zimbabwe the other day, uh, winning by one goal. Um, but this baby Spa Proteas team, I can tell you now, they are such a well-oiled machine. Precious yes. Temple, the coach, is spoiled for choice here. 12 players that you can put on court at any given moment and they'll deliver the goods. It's really good to see how they've just been getting better with every game that they've been playing. Seeing now that Team Namibia is on that defense and making it difficult for Prinsler in a goal shooting position. She also started yesterday and started off with a 100% goal average. But it seems like she's struggling a bit at the start of this match versus Namibia. But we know how potent that South African defense is and they answered right back. South Africa is back on the attack and you can see these goals are ready to fight even though it's their sixth match. But I think maybe that's why those little mistakes are creeping in. It's been six matches these goals have played. They've been running very hard, picking up, putting up big scores to our this tournament so it'll be interesting to see how coach precious will use a bench today it's the precision precision down court for me from the south african side unfortunately just missing that one but picked up well by lisa ingerson contact arm goal defense penalty it's a bit of a slow start for me in this first quarter. You know, we've seen the South African side normally scoring 15 goals in the first the first quarter. That's been their run rate. Yesterday, they were really tightly pressed against Malawi. They couldn't reach that 50-goal mark. So we'd love to see them really, you know, switching it up and turning the heat on and letting that ball go down court with speed. Uh, we're halfway through the match and uh, definitely the pace of this match is not what we expected to see so early in the morning with fresh bodies and uh, Team South Africa has been showing how elite they are with doesn't matter what, how many games they play per day, what time they're playing, they're just a wild old machine being able to just put up those scores but unfortunately even there Namibia unable to convert that goal, but getting a second opportunity just purely because of lack of discipline and an obstruction call against South Africa. Oh, great rebound from the good attack of Namibia, who is uh, Upapandira. Where you are? Touching goalkeeper both. Both out. Oh, just falling short. Oh, my goodness. I was about to say what a brilliant take on that rebound from the goal shooter, Cagnolo. But South Africa come away with it. And I love the way they use the width of the court, the swings, and just exploiting all that space that's available. The angles that they're using on the attack. Oh, and they're ever so accurate. Lisa Ingerson just not putting a foot wrong at the moment. She was also sensational yesterday against Malawi. I love the fact that she's got so much range. You know, normally our shooters want to get close to the post, but I love the fact that she gets in that circle, faces the post, and just converts. And I actually had a chat to her yesterday after the game, and she said she doesn't want to keep playing around because it gives defenders opportunity. But also, because the match against Malawi was so physical on the body, she just wanted to protect herself by just getting the ball and taking the shots. And I think that's a brilliant strategy. I'm glad to hear players are picking up on that playing so many balls gives defenders an opportunity just like we just saw on screen with the goal defense with the beautiful fly coming in from Team Namibia. We need to be able to 
connect a bit quicker as teammates Contact. from both Contact. sides and not play these five balls around that causes a lot of, I mean, your fitness, your ball placement. It ca a lot comes into play with it, but more than anything, it's just a defender's feeding horse. Namibia! It's a brilliant steal from Namibia. They converted. It's their centre pass. Just trailing by four goals. Really an impressive start from this Namibian side. I think that win against Zimbabwe really, you know, gave them a lot of confidence to know that they can compete against the major teams. They've got so much belief. And, you know, they just silently go about their business. They stay in it. They don't allow the teams to pull away. Oh, very uncharacteristic miss there from the goal shooter, Cagnolo. And quickly look on the transition, the South African side on the attack. Advantage obstruction in defense. Advantage obstruction center, Namibia. Prince Lou wants to get herself close Advantage to the post. She does well. South Africa. Just less than five minutes left of this quarter. And South Africa leading by five goals. Oh, that was a brilliant read from the goal defense. Unfortunately, he couldn't get both hands on that ball. Namibia. Vantage with great in. Great in position with defense. Lisa oh. Emerson in a goal attack position for South Africa. She's having a brilliant start to this match. Not afraid to put up a shot. She gets in the shooting circle, puts up the shot, and taking a lot of pressure off of Prince Lua. That struggled a little bit at the beginning, but hopefully she'll find her rhythm as the match goes on. But South Africa means business here, and they will hopefully try and push to get another 15 goals on her as they've been getting throughout this tournament. And we only have under four minutes left to play, and on cue, Prince Lua secures another goal. Match out this South Africa. Oh, Team South Africa having more than enough time to actually meet their target of uh, the average of 15 goals per quarter. With the way Lisa is moving in the circle right now, she is just able to take those shots at any range and making sure that Giada, the goal shooter, is able to back her up with those rebounds. I mean, you're such a lucky player if you have a, a partner next to you who is there to back you up. Like, ah, favor coming in for that intercept. Two hands, creating great pressure, pressure for her team to get another opportunity at goal, and Lisa converts. South Africa. Options in that shooting circle for South Africa. Contact. We've seen the combination of Prince Lou and Everson. We've also seen Andrews and Smith. I love the agility and the mobility of the shooting combination of Prince Lou and Lisa Ingvrigsen. There's two and a half minutes left then of this first quarter. Look at this press here in the midcourt from South Africa. But easy does it for Namibia. Just patiently try to play that ball through, but unfortunately overcooked that pass. Good double play. I must commend the Namibian defense right there, doing exactly what Team South Africa was doing, the press on them, making it hard for South Africa to find that connection and get those straight drives that have been so easy for them to come from the front. Yes. The more they are on the body, the closer they are to their partners, the more pressure they'll be able to cause for Team South Africa to get that ball circle edge. Like we see the thousand balls that are being played around, but rather be safe than sorry and just forcing that ball in. And our unfortunate Lisa being collided with the pole over there on the bad baseline drive, giving Namibia another shot at goal. It's good patience from Namibia. Taking it ball for ball. They're trying to get into that circle. They eventually find the circle's edge. It's a much different tempo here from this Namibian side. Oh, the miscommunication. 
She was looking for the goal shooter, Gagnolo. Unfortunately, couldn't find her. And quickly down court, they come there in South Africa. Minute left. They want to make sure they can score. Oh, good contest on the rebound from Prince Lou. She sinks it then for South Africa. Still enough time on the clock to get another goal. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Offload, looking down court. Andrews, let's see if they can, Namibia can get one before this quarter is done. I'm sure Team South Africa will be making sure that they don't get or allow Namibia to get this, call, this goal by just call, adding that pressure that they've been doing on the circle. I mean, the confusion that they're causing the Namib Namibian side to get, but uh, the goal attack, sneaky one coming through over there, just unable to finish her, her shot and giving South Africa, just look at the pace that they're moving down court. Less than 10 seconds left of this quarter. Beautiful roll by Lisa. Great connection between the two. And unfortunately, it is a goal actually for Team South Africa. Certainly a brilliant start in this first quarter from the baby pro tears. I must say that Namibia though, you know, they're there, but they mustn't let themselves let this gap um, extend. And that's how we end the first quarter then. With South Africa leading 17 goals to four. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the silent assassin. When the gloves go on, it's guaranteed total obliteration. Nice. Counter punch and got him with the left. He set that left hook up with the right hand. Good combination in there. Aloy misses. Now Kenny Vice has no nickname. I think to be a good boxer, it seems like they all have great nicknames, don't they? Retro Boxing. Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. SABC Sport. I mean, honestly, the German League is the only league worth watching now, isn't it? It's all high-scoring action and crazy moments. Easy tap in inside that near post. Well, Danny Olmo keeps his balance. Oh, my goodness. A stylish goal by Danny Olmo. Be immersed and experience it all. Catch all the high-impact action in the Bundesliga, live on SABC Sport, DTT Channel 4, Open View 124, SABC Plus, and also available on sabcsport.com. What a delivery for oh, Mats Homos. It's day five of the tournament, and we have host country South Africa playing against Namibia. It was just the first quarter where South Africa had a brilliant start, currently leading 17 over four. As we look at the bench, we see the ladies are still looking ready for this match. They're not even looking like they're sweating, to be honest. And what we love to see is that Coach Precious Mzumi is having a discussion there with her wing attack, that is Andrews, that we also see in the goal attack position sometimes. But right now we have Lisa Ingerson in that goal attack, and she's been putting up super shots from long range and it's been super impressive but on the opposite side Namibia has been struggling a bit to get their ball to their shooting circle they opted to go with a new shooting combination of Canialo and Uyan Pandera in the goal attack and I'm wondering to see if coach Bobsy will bring in Furi into that goal attack perhaps because we know that she is such a great player not only in the shooting circle but also on the attack helping carrying the ball but we see mama joyce in the crowd always out supporting south africa and everybody is dancing up on their feet but we are super excited to go ahead with the second quarter of this match it is human rights day so to all the humans out there happy human rights day i hope you're having the best day and if you can come down to the rembrandt hall where we have the future of south of african netball competing in the netball world youth cup african qualifiers i'm now going up to commentary where they will tell us a bit more of that first quarter 
What a brilliant first quarter there from the South African side. Namibia's got a lot to play for, though. We still have three quarters left of this game. I'd like to concur with Joe Prince when she says, would love to see Furi on that goal attack position for Namibia. She's been sensational there when she's had the opportunity and looking at what Namibia are putting out on court coming the second quarter, Furi does take that goal attack position. Combining there with her go-to girl, with the go-to girl of the Namibian side, Ganyolo, on that goal shooter position. Well then, Katla Victor gets us underway for the second quarter of this match. Oh, look at that speed. I love the way she dominates the edge of the circle. She, you know, she's so um, determined to land on that circle's edge before she offloads to the shooters, the, the center of the South African side. There we go. Absolutely, Zanele. We spoke about the importance of landing circle edge. I mean, as we said, it causes a barrier so that the defenders are unable to defend the ball and cause any um, distractions for the connection between the midcourt and the shooters. But yet again, we have a, a mistake happening there for Team Namibia and Team South Africa making full use of this opportunity with Andrews at the wing attack position, finding Lisa. The shooting range is just, I mean, she normally sinks it on that, um, that side of, of the court and that range, but struggling a bit in the first um, beginning of this quarter. But I'm guessing as soon as she gets her rhythm, she'll be able to put up those shots. Yeah, and I think also she just needs to wait for the goal defense to land and then she must take the shot because uh, at that now, instance, the goal defense did tap the ball, you know, because yeah, Lisa took that yeah. shot while the goal defense was in the air. So it's just waiting and making sure she re releases it at the perfect time. Oh, Cagnolo does what she does best, also showing that she's South got Africa. range. It was a good conversion from this Namibian side. But they do need something special for me, you know, to be to take this game to the South Africans. The I think the they need circle. to tighten up on outside. defense and really, you know, um, delay them when it comes to the attack and not let, yes. let them get that flow down court. Selection second charm goal defense. Penalty, step up. Oh, it's a better Namibia. effort from Lisa Ingvarsson. Step out of court today, South Africa. Oh, and these are the little errors that Namibia cannot afford at this point in time. Your own centre pass, you need to make sure that you capitalise. Oh, look at that drive from Victor. Just Try couldn't South find Africa. the shooter there though to finish it off. But the first passage of play and the way she dominates that circle's edge is really phenomenal yeah. to observe. It's great to see that uh, the defense is actually on the transverse line, ready to help with the attackers if there's a problem Slashing in front. Defense. So the, it's Middle really team. nice to know that you have back players in case Slashing there's goal a goal problem goal. in front that you're unable to um, pass the ball to the shooters. And I think that's what South Team South, South Africa has perfected throughout the week, Thank is you. being able to always have Thank options you. to offload that ball and not be held or called for that three-second ball. But ah, oh, the goalkeeper, what a stunning I fly from Namibia. How exceptional was that? Look at that timing and her intercept line was perfect. The way she came in and took that ball clean. Yeah. But Trissa says no. She yeah. says not, 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 yeah. not, not today. No, listen, she's been outstanding and consistently so for South Africa. Fissa on that goal defense position. It's either she's with Kabuya as the goalkeeper. I love to see this combination of Bordenstein and Fissa. Also something special, something different. That reach of Bordenstein over the shot. Namibia. Really is a massive weapon for this defensive duo at the back. Rather than correct and to wing attack. Vantage obstruction. Oh, beautiful pressure from Team South Africa, making sure that Namibia makes their own mistakes so that they can capitalize on that the pressure the defense of south africa is putting on namibia is just phenomenal but unfortunately there a bit of a buttery hands happening on andrews for giving namibia another opportunity to be able to score a goal
Oh, hands over for South Africa. Trying to draw the impatience from the Namibians, but they just patiently playing that ball. Miscommunication there. Cagnolo was doing, attempting the roll. But the ball was released and down court they go then. Quickly get on that circle's edge, looking for the shooters. Much better passage of play from South Africa and they make it count. Spectators very happy with that one, applauding. After the first quarter, we had the squad 17-4, and I think Coach Bobsy was very concerned of uh, his team only scoring four, that he made a lot of changes in the second quarter. Just to confirm, we have on the goal attack, he brought in for Reed, and then on wing attack is now Uyam Pandera. Center is Bessa, who's the captain. Goal defense is Muimisi, and then on goalkeeper, he brought in Uamburu. So it's interesting to see that he almost changed the entire team coming back into the second quarter, but yet they've only been able to score two goals. I guess it takes time, you know, for the combination to gel and find its rhythm. He certainly needed solutions to, to that first quarter score that was put up by the South Africans. Saxon goalkeeper. And Bonding. Coach Precious and Temple opting not to make any changes to her starting lineup. Advantage. Ray King with a tap. Replay, goal, uh, replay there called Three on balls. Prince Lou, giving Namibia another chance now. It's going to be important for them to make use of this turnover ball. I mean, we mentioned uh, a whole starting line change for Team Namibia and uh, talking about how it might take a while for them to, to gel. But on the positive, we're seeing fresh legs come on okay, court. We're field, seeing a different circle. starting line uh, taking a court. So it's good to see different players are trying or having the opportunity to take court with the likes of a team like South Africa and feeling the pressure and feeling the demands and the, the strength of Team South Africa. I mean, that's an experience that we all came here to see. Uh, so as a player, you want to play against the best to be the best. 100%, and you speak about South Africa, you know, this lineup is not something we've seen like yesterday against Malawi. This is a completely different lineup. So it speaks also to the depth and the strength of the South African, um, South African side. The captain of the team is on the bench. There's no space for um, Santika Buya, but look at the kind of performance that they could put up. And this is exactly what you need when you're heading to that World Cup in Gibraltar next year. You want to have 12 brilliant players that you can call upon at any given moment. The Australians, they call it the conveyor belt, that ability that if one player is out, the next one that comes in is of exact equal strength. And that's what South Africa is actually working towards. And that is what I've enjoyed about the South African side. The attackers being so good defensively, the way they turn that ball right in that goal third. I mean, you can see that they're coached by two very, very potent defensive coaches in Precious Mtembo and Pumza Maweni. goalkeeper. So important that for attackers to contribute from a defensive perspective. Namibia. Oh, the pressure from South Africa keeps going. I mean, Zane having a brilliant game there on the goalkeeper side. And I'm liking the way she's also leading from behind. She's communicating to her defenders in front where she wants to be, where she is and where she would like them to go for the intercept. I mean, intercepts are flying from every player. It's not just one player of South Africa contributing. Like Coach Zan said, it's from the shooters, um, from the attackers going all the way to the defense. I mean, if the ball turns, you want the first line of defense to be your attackers. And as soon as that pressure is added there, it's an easier turnover for the defense. Namibia. I mean, Namibia only scoring three goals in this quarter so far, nine minutes gone. It just speaks to how strong and how South Africa has been closing them down, not giving them opportunity to get that ball into the shooting circle. And when it has been in the shooting circle, it's been difficult for the shooters of Namibia to convert because of the pressure from Bridenstine and Fisser. 
possession goal, sh goal shooter. Can Cagnolo get that number five? Contact, defense on the ball. She'll get another opportunity though, but Fisser. Yes, and Brudenstein at height, at that reach, yes. you know, and that physicality that they bring there has been South proving Africa. to be very difficult for the Nubian shooters to manage. Team South Africa having an opportunity at goal. Oh, the precision in the passing that's happening for Team South Africa. Right, it's just amazing to see. You can see it's something they've been working on throughout the whole week. It's easier one, two balls into the circle. It's just that unfortunate, oh, to unable to convert that ball from the goal shooter, Prince Lou. Contact goal defense, penalty. Yes. We can see that this quarter is a bit slower in terms of scoring. Uh, Namibia, they might do a bit better than the first quarter because they were only out of four goals. So maybe the changes Coach Bobsy made is making a difference. But looking over at the bench, we have some Namibia players warming up once again, as well as on the South African side. So we only have uh, just over four minutes left to play, but I think some changes will be coming into that second half. And hopefully then we can pick up the pace of this match because it's really just getting slow now. Oh, what do you guys think up there in the box? Namibia. And wing attack split. Advance at all the player, we attack. Oh, she has not put a foot wrong on that goal attack, Lisa Emerson. I love her confidence, you know. She sends a very strong message to her defenders that don't let me get into that shooting circle because the moment I step in there, that ball is going one way and that's right through the hoop. She's been really consistent for me. Goal defense. And that's a good sign for a player that's preparing to go to maybe book her ticket, you know, to that World Cup um, team in Gibraltar. The flow Team South Africa is having in that uh, attacking end, it's just so phenomenal. I mean, it's just a one-two into the circle, no pressure. Namibia needs to get closer to their opponent, just like Flavor just showed right now. You need to be next to your partner, not on their body. Be able to be a, have the agility and the ability to control your body, get that ball, cause the pressure for the other team and be able to turn over those balls for your team side, which is what we're seeing from Team South Africa. Goal defense, goal defense, Struggling up. a bit in that shooter end to make sure that they convert that ball with ease. But also, I think in any match, you also don't want that easy play all the time. You do goal want shooter. a bit of a um, clumsy play, confusion, just to see what your players are made out of and how they get themselves out of those sticky situations. Can't agree with you more. And if you're playing against uh, African teams, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get the physicality. You're going to get the contest, you know, body on body. And you need to be strong to take those hits. It only strengthens you, it sharpens you. And you need to make sure that those contacts don't get into your head exactly the way Prince is doing. Staying strong, focused in that shooting circle, despite that physical contest. Time, time. Sometimes players look for the umpire's protection, you know, but they need to be able to absorb that physicality. And the South African side has done a good job with that. We saw them in that game against Namibia yesterday. It was extremely physical, but they weren't deterred. They stayed focused on the task in the moment. Oh, the offload. Quick hands from Victor to Prince Lu. South Africa. Just under a minute left of this game and uh, Team South Africa showing their class, showing that they want to book this ticket to Gibraltar next year in 2025. But for now, they are perfecting all the little 
plays that their coach has set out for them and uh, Prince Lu holding the goalkeeper so well I think that's what she's been doing so greatly in the second quarter is being able to put her goalkeeper behind her to make sure that her tummy is open and that it's an easy connection for her teammates to be able to find her and they've done so well to keep Namibia to only five goals in this quarter in 15 minutes Namibia could any could only score five goals Brilliant performance here defensively from South Africa and they've been able to get that ball down court with speed precision and get the scoreboard ticking. Unfortunately, they won't be able to make use of this turn of a ball and that's the halftime score then in this game. 33 for South Africa and 9 for Namibia. It's a lot to play for still for both these teams come the second half of this game. Sydney McLaughlin Lerone is the defending gold medalist and world record holder in the 400 metres hurdles. In 2021, McLaughlin Lerone became the first woman to break the 52 second barrier in her event. The following year, she became the first to dip under 51 seconds. She was voted World Athletics Female Athlete of the Year for her brilliance. The American is also a formidable 400 meter flat runner and won gold in Tokyo as part of the USA's 4x400 relay squad. at the Paris Games than the triathlon. At the height of summer, competitors begin with a 1500 meter swim in the Seine, followed by a 40 kilometer bike ride, and then a 10 kilometer run to the finish line. And they do all this in under two hours. Individual races were among the most captivating at Tokyo 2020. Norway's unbreakable Ironman Christian Blumenfeld stormed home to win the men's event, while Flora Duffy secured Bermuda's first ever Olympic gold in the women's. Possibly even the GOAT. Simone Biles is back for Paris 2024. Biles made headlines in Tokyo after bravely admitting to the phenomenon known as the Twisties. Instead of leaving Japan with a truckload of medals, she departed with only a silver and a bronze and an immense amount of scrutiny. After time away, she returned triumphantly in 2023 winning three individual gold medals at the World Championships. After missing out in Tokyo, 2024 should finally be the moment the Olympics salutes Simone Biles as the greatest of all time. Welcome uh, back to the University of Pretoria. We are in the Rembrandt Hall here with Action Pack Nepal to the Nepal World Youth Cup. And we see South Africa and Namibia in action and they are firing up the court. And now we have the halftime interviews with Joe Prince. It's halftime here with South Africa and Namibia. South Africa really running away with it in that first half. I'm now joined by Loide, the goal shooter of Namibia. That's been struggling a little bit in a goal shooting circle. Loide, tell me, it's been a bit of a struggle. The defense is really making it difficult for you. Yes. Coming back for the second half, what will you change? 
Um, I'm going to encourage my girls to come in front because the long posts are not working at all because they are tall and their elevation is very good. So I'm going to tell them to come forward, to come collect the ball and we take it from there, see how it goes in the, sec in the third quarter. Thank yeah. you. All the best. Thank you very much. Now we have South Africa there in that goal attack position. Lisa Ingerson has been putting up those long range shots and it's just been going swish, Lisa. Lisa, Thank tell me, how does it feel after that first half? No, it felt good. I think we can be more clinical on the down court play and the loose balls, but I think we're playing good and we can only um, improve from here. Thank you. All the best for the second half. Thank you so much, Dan. And uh, we see South Africa over there dominating this whole match, especially with their attackers being able to turn balls, being able to give their shooters second opportunities for any rebound or any mistake that's happening. So it's great to see the attackers of Team South Africa actually dominating this match rather than waiting for them to turn over the, the, any balls in the defensive end. Yeah, for me, they've just had such great connections. There's such good understanding, ball speed, precision, strong drives onto that circle's edge. Victor's really been on song when it comes to that. And the conversion rate from the shooting combination of Prince Lou and Inverson has really been on song. It's so impressive to see that, you know, this combination can also create the magic that we've seen with other combinations that Co Coach Precious and Tembe has been able to put on. And for me, also something that's been outstanding about this South African side is the ability, you know, to take the tempo up with every quarter. They play so well when it comes to the final quarter. From, from a defensive perspective, they've also been a well-oiled machine. A different defensive combination, though, we see Fissa with Bordenstein there. Just take a that look. You know, the reaction, the ability to really put pressure on the shooting combination of Furi and Gagnol of Namibia. I mean, the goalkeeper of South Africa has been leading from behind, making sure that she's communicating exactly where she wants her goal defence and wing defence to be. I mean, Favour coming in for those intercepts in the middle of the court, just causing an upset and making sure that Team Namibia don't find the connection that they've been looking for to make sure that they convert. With Namibia, end over there they are struggling a bit to find each other um, on the shooting side of South Africa the goalkeeper and goal defense just need to actually react a bit more to the ball and cause a bit more direction for the team and we have the score over here still being for halftime 33 to South Africa and 9 for Namibia Sydney McLaughlin Lerone is the defending gold medalist and world record holder in the 400 metres hurdles. In 2021, McLaughlin Lerone became the first woman to break the 52 second barrier in her event. The following year, she became the first to dip under 51 seconds. She was voted World Athletics Female Athlete of the Year for her brilliance. The American is also a formidable 400 meter flat runner and won gold in Tokyo as part of the USA's 4x400 relay sport. Deal or No Deal emerged as Mzanti's biggest game show, very quickly establishing itself as a series that changes lives. And you can bet that banker is still bargaining for all those bucks. And if you'd like to be the person in the hot seat battling the banker, you know what you need to do. Go to our website, dealornodeal.co.za and follow those instructions carefully. That quarter of a million rand could be all yours. Deal or No Deal, proudly sponsored by Lotto Star. What's up, poopers? Tune in for the freshest vibes on NBA Live. Live, your ultimate basketball lifestyle show in Mzanti. On this week's episode, we chat to Pretty Ugly about all things basketball related. Basketball and hip hop are like brother and sister. And we also feature a special performance by Pretty Ugly performing his song, Poto Poto. NBA Live is on Sunday, the 17th of March at 1 p.m. on SABC2.
welcome back. It is half time here at the Nepal World Youth Africa Qualifiers. It is South Africa going up against Namibia and South Africa has pulled away in that second quarter and they are currently leading with 33 over 9. It has been a thrilling matchup to start us off on day, day 5 already. Gosh, it's already day five and we've been treated to so many brilliant games and South Africa is already at five out of five and they would love to make it six out of six with this matchup against Namibia. But the Namibians have been struggling because Fisser and Bordenstein in that goal defense and goalkeeper position has just been shutting them down. And then on the opposite side, we had Lisa Imbersen and Prince Lua giving enough for a team to make sure that they tick the box and they continue getting goals but it has been a thriller of a first half and I'm sure looking forward to that second half as well as all these people here in the Rembrandt Hall that came out to watch these youngsters compete in this tournament and South Africa is sure wanting to book their ticket to next year where it's 2025 in Gibraltar in September we have the Nepal World Youth Cup but right now I'm going upstairs to commentary to chat a bit more about that first half. Uh, we've been spoiled by a great netball from these sides, uh, but a Team South Africa just dominating and showing that they very much mean business. They came here to dominate and they are showing on every cylinder that or any problem or challenge that they are experiencing that they can overcome anything. All 12 players getting fair opportunity on court and using it to the best of their ability. And as we can see, we have a, a crowd forming here on this Heritage on Human Rights Day um, holiday in South Africa. And uh, we also know that in Namibia, it's Independence Day for them. So it's good to see the crowd here being spoiled with such good netball. So if you're in and around Pretoria, please join us here at the Rembrandt Hall. Certainly been a phenomenal performance from the South African side. We're looking at the two co-captains there, Woodenstein and Fisser, having a chat to the umpires, probably just seeking some clarity on a couple of, on a couple of rules. It's good to see also the Rembrandt Hall filled, getting full on this, uh, on this holiday. A lot of young netballers, aspiring netballers here, one day want to be like the spa, the, the baby proteas, rearing those um, those colours. I was almost I almost said green and gold, but it's not green and gold yet for them. Um, Gina, you've had the privilege of of being in that position, you know, and you know what it means, and you know what it takes to be able to wear the protea on your chest. And as we're about to get underway, then Carla Victor will take us underway then for this third and championship quarter. No changes from the coach of South Africa, Precious Ntembu, sticking to her starting combination. Zan, why do you think so? Why do you think Coach Precious is not uh, making any changes? I mean... It's they far ahead, you know, give everyone a chance. That's what we always expect or been saying to our viewers that we just want to see all 12 players. But why has Coach Presses not changed at all? If you think about yesterday, they had a really, the combination that's not on court at the moment, played a full match against the, um, Malawi yesterday. It was a very physical game. So I think it's important that she, you know, player managers give them enough time to re really just recover because they still are heading to that final. So it's important for them to be able to get as much time on court as possible. So I'm so fortunate to be sitting courtside because I am in the middle of all the action. And now I'm joined by Santish. Santish, say hello to the people up there. Cindy, so you um, had half time in the locker room with your coach now, right? What did your coach say to you coming into the second half? Um, she just told us to be more clinical because um, in the previous half we were not doing um, everything that we were supposed to. So we have goals that our coach set out for us and this quarter or this half, we just want to focus on like completing the goals that were set out for us. All right, I'm sure the ladies on court, she's sticking with the same combination. We'll take that instruction and apply it in this third quarter. Uh, Prince Lou over there, making sure that Team South Africa's uh, scoreboard just keeps ticking over with her shooting average being so high throughout the match and just keeping on improving. And we see the play down court, not really as smooth as we expected or have seen it throughout the first half of the game. A bit of a 
Yes. Indecisiveness coming or creeping in for Team South Africa. We just need a straight, straight options are coming to the player with the ball and making sure that there's more than one option actually to offload that ball to. And that's exactly what the coach spoke to at halftime to the players in the change room to say she's looking for more clinical play. Error count needs to drop. But also, you know, fatigue could also be a, a, a key thing at this point in time. But we do see that a lot of the, what we call the bomb squad on that bench of the South African side, having burbs on. Atkins with the wing attack burb. We're looking at center. Uh, Kayla Darmus and Sunal Smith with the goal shooter burb. So there could be some changes. And the captain, Nimitangari, with the wing defense burb. There could be some changes then that could be rolled in by Coach Precious and Tembu. Just to, you know, give another combination an opportunity, you know, to gel. Oh, great feed from Namibia. Good, ah, uh, sneaky play from the shooter. One foot up, bouncing it back. Making sure Furi has a prime spot of at opportunity at goal and unfortunately she's unable to convert but Bordenstein getting the rebound over there making sure that South Africa gets another opportunity at goal and already in the shooting third Andrews Bands carrying that ball finding Victor just a bit it's a bit not as clinical that we they've been talking about Possession that they want to play clinical netball now, a bit sticky a Play bit pass, unkept netball seeing from Team South Africa, but nevertheless, South they make Africa. use of the ball that they have, and uh, Prince Lou making sure that her shooting average just keeps going up. Ingerson. Ames falls short, but the good rebound taken by Prince Lou. Namibia. Yeah, it's a bit of That's a slow of third quarter center. for me from both these teams. <laughs> you know, that pace that South Africa was playing with in the first half. Slow, definitely not at the same tempo. Oh, called for footwork. Namibians. The error count is rising here for this Namibian side. And it's unforced errors. Defense. Following a player of court, defending from off court with defense. It is inside. It's a penalty pass for South Africa on my shoot. Tight body on body, but Prince Lou does well to protect that space and get the defenders locked South behind. Africa. To make sure she sinks that goal then for South Africa. Um, Zan, I want to talk about, um, I mean, we've been talking about the shooters this whole time. It'll be interesting to, to see and hear your take on the yeah. shooting average. I mean, Namibia. we see uh, Team South Africa a shooter, Gyada Prince-Lu, starting off with a 78% on okay, the first okay. quarter. And in the second quarter, she is on a 93. And uh, we see that Lisa started off really strong with an 83% goal average and falling uh, a bit off the wagon with a 33% shot. Why, why do you think that is? Yeah, there could be many uh, reasons that can Advantage contribute to that, but that's definitely not the standard of a South African goal shooter uh, by no means at all. You know, she's got to be able, because obviously the physicality is also increasing, but she's got to be able to take the hits and still be able to convert goals under that pressure. But I do think that changes will be made by Coach Precious and Tembu. You know, um, just to give the rest of the players on the bench a good run because you don't want South I mean they're still Africa. heading towards the semi-finals and finals yes, and they want to make sure that everybody has received enough game time advantage obstruction in defense Advantage you see now, she's also choosing not to take the shot. She's opting to rather get take let Prince Lou be the one to convert. I think she just wants to give herself take. some time to just find herself again, you know, um, and gain her confidence. 
Uh, we see uh, Jade has joined us on court with the rolling sub there. Jade Atkins on the wing attack position for Team South Africa. She's just like a, a dynamite on court. She's just so potent. Her movement, her speed, her, her placement, her touch on the ball into the circle. It's just been so phenomenal and so great to watch. And she's 17 years old and she's playing for the under 21s. She's the youngest player in this group. She's in matric and for me, she's just absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. The future of South Africa when it comes to the midcourt with Jade Atkins there is extremely bright. She's such a strong attacker, so smart, her court intelligence, you know, her IQ there on that wing attack position. You can also play her on center. So she's extremely versatile. Oh, brilliant read there from the goalkeeper of Namibia. But then they lose it again. And that's been the problem with this Namibian side is that they turn ball, but they don't capitalize. You know, they get excited instead of just taking a moment, patiently playing that ball through. Yes, where you are? Throw oh, Lisa, Namibia. unfortunately missing that shot. It would be really nice to see her try to get Outside, closer to the post, get those pass. those Inside, short shots in, and then see her Namibia. go back um, into her average shooting Advantage space where she'll have more confidence to take that Throw shot in, and Namibia. see them sink in. But again, Team South Africa all over Namibia, making it difficult yes, for them are. to find that connection and speed and flow through court in, with Fissa okay. just disrupting that play ball, please, ball. on that side of the court it's, it's, where it's Joe it's has a front row inside. seat uh, on this yes. matchup happening right in front of us. We have Team Namibia and versus Team South Africa. Five and a half minutes Throw left then of this Africa. third quarter. Throw it, yeah. Still struggles from the side of Namibia. You can see the faces, the expressions on the coaches' faces. Not looking to Bandit please with Spain. the performance Bandit Namibia has been putting out Spain. here. But on the side of South Africa, even though they are ahead and, they tr and they're leading by quite a huge margin, Coach Precious and Tim are still not happy with the quality and the standard of the performance is looking Africa. for clinical play, clinical execution. She wants them to drop that error rate and error count significantly down. Throw in South Africa. And we're just looking at the bench of South Africa. Yes. There's a couple of so players that are warming up. Are. So we might see some fresh legs being introduced. Contact push called defense knee. What well, defense defend the pass on? Yes. Ready to obstruction. Oh, good patient play by Lisa. Making sure that her shooter has a clear advantage at goal Namibia. over there where Prince Lou does convert. And Namibia, oh. You can see the exchange of words on court over there. That miscommunication between the center and the goal attack for Rhee. I think Namibia, it's going to take more. Oh, well done. It's going to take more than just, you know, trying to find the connection. I think we need to start planning what play they want to play, what, setting up that play so that they get off the body for from South Africa. But for Rhee, taking a good play over there, converting it for Namibia. And uh, we get a tip from Namibia again, giving them another shot at goal. Joe, what are you seeing from your side there? Just looking over at the benches, Tina, I already see that both teams have their bench players warming up. So I think there might be some changes coming in, especially also for Namibia. They're starting to find their rhythm now, but they only scored six goals at this stage. And we know they started off with only four, then adding five. So it's already at six and they got a turnover. So hopefully they will build momentum in this third quarter and continue with that into the final one. But the coach might still choose to make some changes because like we said, the same side with South Africa and Zanela, you said it yourself, 
itself. It's those those, those error rate, man. It's the error rate that is too high on both sides, I think. So going back into the fourth quarter, I think both coaches will have a chat with their players just to remind them that keeping possession is the most important thing. Can't agree with you. Can't agree more with you, Joe Prince. Even though fatigue is starting to set in, you must either, you know, maybe just drop the tempo a bit instead of playing fast, just making sure that you keep that error count down. At the moment, both these teams, you know, the error count has really gone up in this third quarter. And that's going to be an issue of concern for, it should be an issue of concern for both coaches, specifically for South Africa because... Offside, they know pass. that they are preparing Namibia. for that World Cup spot against the best teams in the world. This kind of performance is certainly not going to cut it. So they'll need to really make some major adjustments. Let's see if the girls shoot. Oh, Boyd and Stain. The timing, brilliant deflection there. But then, unfortunately, couldn't get both hands on that ball, giving Namibia another opportunity to be able to score. It's getting a bit physical in that shooter end of uh, Namibia. Oh, there we have Zane Budenstein just unable to keep full control of that ball, but her arms just towering over the shooter of Namibia. And here we are, we have Namibia again, trying everything they can to make sure that they get this opportunity at goal, pushing the shooter all the way high up. And that's, that's because of the defense of Team South Africa working so hard, a bit of tassel happening as well. It's just getting a bit uh, physical for Team Namibia and Team South Africa in the defensive end of the South African end. But Namibia keeping their cool, making sure that they keep ball possession and converting that ball. Still got a half, th 30 seconds left then of this third quarter. Can Lisa Everson sink it from that range? Yes, that's a good confidence booster and the crowd love it. Spectacular conversion there from the goal attack of South Africa. And she's so composed, she's so calm, her demeanor, you know, she makes it look so easy. Here's another chance, 10 seconds to go. Unfortunately, it's prevented out. from from Namibia. Atkins looks into the shooting circle, opts to play the reset ball though. Yeah, you oh, can see, well, she knew that the time was up and they're having a conversation about it. It's all smiles. And uh, hand claps there from the South Africans. And that's the score then come the, thir the end of the third quarter. South Africa leading 46 goals to 17. Next on Lincoln Ryan. Forensics found a small amount of DNA and ran it. It's Lucy Arthur's. Can't be hers. She's been missing for five years. Maybe this is the lead that brings her home. We're looking for this girl. Have you seen her? I cannot help you. Lincoln, these people are lying to us. Witnesses lie all the time. But lying to stop us from finding a missing girl, that's a new one. Lincoln Ryan, Hunt for the Bone Collector. Saturdays, 8.30 on 2. Surfing enjoyed a triumphant Olympic debut in Japan. And the sport is sure to hog the headlines again in Tahiti. That's right. Almost 10,000 miles from Paris in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, the 2024 Games will descend on the French Overseas Territory. A total of 48 surfers will take to the water at the famous Chopu's Break, home of some of the world's heaviest waves. In the men's event, a stack of Brazilians led by Felipe Toledo are on course for the podium, while America's Carissa Moore is favorite to defend her title from Tokyo.
Welcome back to the Rembrandt Hall. We're sitting courtside here with one of the players from Namibia. It's Usutu sitting next to me. Say hi, Usutu. Hi. <laughs> so, Usutu, you know, these speed courts have been a bit tough for your side. It's now 17.46 for South Africa. And going to the bench with your coach, what is your coach saying to you girls for the f fourth quarter especially? What do you think you should do? Um, um, since we are going through a lot, uh, not really a lot, but our, one of our GK lost her mother. So it was, we're a bit down from the second quarter. But now our coach also just tell us that we should uh, uh, look, up, look up and just... Uh, even though we are, if, even though we are losing and all that, we should uh, uh, c continue going and just to just to keep going for because we have a second game that is coming, so we just have to just keep up, just keep going. And that's what our coach told us: just not to give up now for now. Yes, and we know that you are a team that doesn't give up because looking at the match you had before your rest on Tuesday, you didn't give up until the final second. And your coach did say that all he tells you is to never give up. If the other team scores, you score two times more. If they get an intercept, you get an intercept as well. Yes, it might be a bit too much to ask to take a win at this, but you shouldn't give up because, like you said, you have another match coming up. So what are things you're going to take away from this match going into the next one? Excuse me, come again? What are things you're going to take away from this match going into the next one later? Oh, okay, so one of the things that you're going to take is that oh, the other match is a must-win match, so we have to bring our, all our best. So for for now, we just keep the, the goal difference. And since South Africa is a good team, so I feel like we're also learning a lot from them also. So, so we'll be, I feel like <laughs> the spacing and all that we've learned it. Thank you so much for joining me. You can go back to your team now, and I'm sure that you will not take the loss, but take a take a learning lesson from this. Because sometimes it's not about losing, but about learning. Because they still have a match coming up later. But right now, it's the final quarter for this match against South Africa. Now I'm going back to commentary to take us through the final quarter. And uh, we are starting the last quarter of this match. Team South Africa set us off, but we see there's a few changes that needs to happen. Is this the technical time called for swapping on court that we're seeing that Namibia has finally perfected and no one has to be called off court because they called the wrong time for the wrong thing? Uh, so it's good to see that we, we are playing within the rules and understanding the rules of Nepo. Also looking at those changes being made by South Africa. Smith then makes her way into that goal shooter position. Damas will take the center. Atkins remains on wing attack. The captain Nema Tangari comes in on wing defense. Favor remains on wing on, on sorry, Nema Tangari on goal defense. Wow, that's an interesting change there from Coach Precious and Tembu. We have seen her in that goal defense position. And then Kabuya comes in on the goalkeeper. South Africa. Untouch center, free pass, Namibia. In the goal first. Here you go. Untake holding wing attack penalty. Yes. It's injecting some fresh legs here, South Africa. You can see the intensity has definitely increased in this final quarter. Oh my goodness, that would have been a brilliant steal from Kayla Damas. Gagnolo for the conversion. It's a good start in this final Namibia. quarter from Namibia. Vantage breaking goal attack. Contact knee goalkeeper. Penalty pass. Contact push goal defense. Both players out of play now. Step up goalkeeper. Besides goal defense. Play. Hold time. Um, okay, that is intimidation. You mustn't do it. You mustn't step on the floor. Thank you. Okay, firm and stern words there from the umpire to Nema Tangari. On intimidation not to step on the, she says she mustn't step on the floor you know when she's trying to defend the player oh she falls short Sinal Smith 
And she really had a tough time yesterday against that Malawi uh, outfit. They were extremely physical. But I love how Coach Precious and Temple kept her on court and said, you know, she must find solutions for herself. And now she's brought her in in the final quarter to make sure that she just gets a bit of game time today. Advantage call center. Welcome, Kayla Dahmer's onto court, doing what she does best, reading the play so well, knowing which ball to go for, which ball to stay away from, and uh, always causing the pressure for any of her opponents to make it so difficult for them to be able to play against her. Kayla Dahmer's on the center position for Team South Africa. Advantage, South Africa. Advantage incorrectly positioned to attack. Contact outside goalkeeper. I mean, if you're looking at the height advantage that Smith has against the goalkeeper of Namibia, she should just be standing there anchoring, and just indicating exactly where she wants that ball to be placed. Don't want to see her moving out of the circle because she's got strong enough attackers to bring that ball to her right on the circle's edge obstruction center outside penalty outside the penalty yes where you are obstruction on second jump second jump second jump obstruction yes solid conversion then from free she's South been quiet Africa. in this game though Today, she didn't start in that goal attack attacks. position, but you can see the difference she makes the moment she steps, she puts on that goal attack bib. Contact, holding, wing attack, off. Oh. Ball subtraction, goal attack. Ball subtraction, wing defense. I know. Center. Good pressure from uh, the South African attackers, causing a bit of a, a bit of a commotion there for the defenders of Namibia to make sure that they turn the ball. Like we've been saying throughout this game, that the attacking force of South Africa have been the front line of the defence for them to be able to correct their mistakes and making sure that they give themselves an opportunity at goal over and over again. So it's good to see that Team South Africa's attackers are as strong as their defensive unit. It's now contact falling on here. It's a penalty. Goalkeeper out of play. Guess where you are? Obstruction. Penalty pass. Goalkeeper, you free. Okay. South Africa. Oh, that's a good drive. Strong drive deep into the pocket from Damas. Finding Evanson into the circle. Oh, man, it's just too smooth on the attack for South Africa. Technical change, South Africa. There's a change being, being made by South Africa. Andrews makes her way on the wing attack position and that's where she's been for most of this game normally she'll also put on the goal attack bib but that's how versatile this player is when we speak about south africa being spoiled for choice brilliant defense there from damas as a center that's one of her strength for me intentional and it's an official warning oh my goodness a warning they called for the wing attack of namibia move, move up there wait wait it's on the other side then you advance it to half Wing attack, you move with her. You move with her wing attack. Clear instructions there from the umpire. Speaking about Damas and her contribution defensively as a center, so spectacular. I mean, people don't even know that she's also a very brilliant goal defense. That's how versatile this player is. So now Smith makes this one count. South Africa. And you see the crowd applauding, you know, trying to encourage her. The 
Contact goal defense. It's a penalty. Yes. South Africa. Certainly a better performance here from the goal shooter of South Africa, Sunel Smith. She had a tough game yesterday, but I'm glad to see that she's picked herself up and she's showing such great confidence. She's planting herself right under the post. You know, she's not doing too much. It's easy for her feeders to offload that ball to her. Advantage of striking goal attack, South Africa. Obstruction, advantage, South Africa. It's the throw-in. Throw-in Namibia. Throw-in Namibia, untouched, yes. Just under six minutes left of this final quarter. Umpires making sure that the game is still in play. Girls following the rules. And they've been so nice and, and clear with the instructions, the umpires of this game, making it very easy for the players to be able to execute what they have to do. And unfortunate, I think that was a, a very short ball from Sunal Smith. Could possibly be a tap on the hand that happened that uh, the umpire was unable to see. But nevertheless, Namibia is on the run, making sure that they bring the ball down. Close circle edge, uh, finding Kayolo, who's been the heart of the Namibians. But not on the watch of uh, South Africa, Kabuya making sure that she rebounds. Nice, strong player in Kabuya that South Africa has over there. Coming into the final minutes of this match, it's great for me to see in that center position, Thomas. I'm a big fan of Thomas, especially because of a defensive effort um, on the on the center position. But also, when coach brought in Andrews on that wing attack position, she just runs the attack for me, and I'm such a big fan of of Andrews both on the wing attack and and goal attack position. Because just there, you see, not only does she attack, she defends as well. There's actually nothing that Andrews cannot do, in my opinion. I couldn't agree with you more, Joe. Andrews is having a phenomenal game. She's been so strong on the attack, so dominant on bringing that ball down, being the main carrier for South Africa, and also being able to cause pressure for the turnovers. Like we see there, she's trying everything she can, and she's coming out with those sneaky pressure point balls that she's been playing for South Africa, making sure not forcing the ball in. Andrews has just been one to look out for in this match. That's the impact that she's had in the South African side. Wherever Coach in Precious and Campbell point, chooses to play her, she pass. just delivers the goods. Renesia Andrews, yes. three and a half minutes left then of this game. South Africa have really put their foot on the accelerator. There were pockets and moments of brilliance from Namibia, but they were just were not consistent enough. The third quarter is a concern though for South Africa because the error count did go up. Changes were made, fresh legs were introduced. And they would want to close off on a high here. She falls short though, Ingerson, but the good contest on the rebound from Smith. South Africa. Okay. 
That definitely deserves a smile. She's been consistently solid in that goal attack position to be able to play a whole hour. Yes, there were moments when her percentage did drop and that's something that she'll need to work on. But it's good to see her still running with the same intensity. Lisa Emerson, let's see if she can convert this one. Oh, excellent, exceptional, the crowd love it. The applause, the standing ovation for this young player on that goal attack position for South Africa. That's exactly what she needs to do. She needs to wait for the goal defense to land and then take that shot. Oh, I'm just getting goosebumps, you know, the way she's just been so good. And her composure for me, you know, she's not phased by anything. Cool, calm, so collected like a cucumber. South Africa. The crowd going wild for a Team South Africa in the dying minutes of this match. Just one minute left. Okay, now, okay. Update goal. Update goal. Yeah. Talking about the pace. Forward, talking about the pace of, of Team South Africa, not reaching their normal average of the 70s that we've seen on earlier on in this tournament. But Lisa just finally finding her rhythm, finding her edge, making sure that she's converting that balls. And like you said, Zan, it's all about patience. It's about waiting for that goal defense to land, for her to have that clear vision to the pole and being able to swish into that post. 30 seconds left. Can Smith do the same, fall short. Out of four, three, South Africa, South Africa, South Africa. She just needs to put a little bit more power into that shot. Footwork outside. Oh, Great footwork Namibia. called outside. Quickly, they need to transition now, South Africa, and try and keep Namibia from scoring. Oh, and the captain outside, comes to the rescue, but unfortunately, he's offside. Oh, brilliant off-road from Cagnolo to Furi. Can she sink it? Kabuya tries to prevent the shot. And Furi falls short again. That's what pressure does, you know. She was putting herself under tremendous pressure, taking that shot quickly. Oh, Andrews looks for Smith. Oh, my goodness. It's just the commotion. That was a brilliant end to this match. So much excitement in the final stages of this game. The coach of Namibia standing up, applauding, happy with the effort from her side. And this is how we end this game then. South Africa 61 and Namibia 25. The women's 100-meter sprint will be the most competitive event on the track at Paris 2024. There is exceptional quality and depth across the field, led by Jamaican's Sherika Jackson, Shelley Ann Fraser-Price, and two-time defending champion Elaine thompson Hera. The USA's Shikari Richardson is the reigning world champion while the Ivory Coast Marie Jose Talou regularly wins Diamond League races. The high standard will put Florence Griffith Joyner's long standing Olympic record under threat. From a young boy who loved to fish, to a man who became a fisherman of men. A man of the people, a man of peace, a man of the cloth, a man of God. I just can't keep quiet. The Desmond Tutu story. 
Sunday at 9.30, SABC2. From a young boy who loved to fish, to a man who became a fisherman of men, a man of the people, a man of peace, a man of the cloth, a man of God. I just can't keep quiet. The Desmond Tutu story, Sunday at 9.30, SABC2. Welcome back. I'm now here with Andrews, the player of the match after that stellar performance up against Namibia. She will be awarded the player of the match award by Ms. Tepiso Sehotse from Maribeng Municipality. There, take Thank your you gift. So take your gift. You deserve it. <laughs> Congratulations, Renisha. How does it feel? Thank you very much. I just feel so honored and so privileged to be able to be part of this team because it's been my, it's, it's been my dream since, ever since I was little, ever since I can remember. And I'm so honored to represent all the little girls also wanting to be here one day. Oh, congratulations. Well deserved. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Now with me is the winning captain, Poppy. Poppy, how does it feel after that win? It's six out of six. Yeah, it feels amazing. But I mean, we, I, th I feel like we can do better with the one percenters. It wasn't a fine-tuned um, performance, but yeah, feeling amazing. And then tomorrow's a rest day, so enjoy it. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't go Namibia's way this time around, but I'm now joined by Elizabeth, this captain. Elizabeth, you still have a match coming up later at four. Yes, what yes, are you taking yes. away from this one going into that? Um, going into this match, we knew South Africa is ranked number one in African netball, so we knew it was not going to be easy. I think that we fought from the first whistle to the final buzzer. We really gave it our all, so now we go back to the drawing board and we prepare for our game against Kenya at 4 p.m. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm going to go up to commentary to show some highlights from that match. After that uh, thriller of a match that just took place from Team South Africa and Namibia, South Africa showing full dominance, showing that they are just so phenomenal in making sure that they solidify their ticket to Gibraltar in 2025, but that in our screen right now, we see Andrews, who is the player of the match, has just put in such an effort for this Team South Africa to make sure that they were victorious today. She's been a sens sensational for the South African side. No matter where she's played, we've seen her at times on the goal attack position. And for me, she's just such a bright star for the future of South Africa. Every time she stepped on court, she's coming, she's delivered the goods. This holistic performance, though, from South Africa, really outstanding. You know, they're ticking the right boxes. Yes, there was a concern in that third quarter when it came to the error count, but that's something that they'll definitely need to go back and work on. And uh, for today, we, we have the results for Team South Africa versus Namibia with 61 to 24. But still, later on to come up, we have Zambia versus Malawi and finishing off the day with Namibia versus Kenya. We'll be back with some highlights after this. A talented lineup of gospel artists. A musical celebration that embodies love and hope. The Jesus Collective, Sunday at half past eight on SABC2.
Join us this month as Archbishop Desmond Tutu takes us by the hand and guides us through our unique country to experience the South African story. I come from a beautiful land, richly endowed with wonderful natural resources, wide expanses, rolling mountains, singing birds, bright shining stars out of blue skies, with radiant sunshine, golden sunshine. There are enough of the good things that come from God's bounty. There are enough for everyone. Let me show you around. Wednesdays, SABC 2. Hello and uh, welcome uh, to Gloomy Pretoria. This is uh, the Nepal Youth World Cup and we have our first match for the day, which is Team South Africa versus Namibia. And uh, for the starting line of Namibia, we have uh, Lloyd, Lloyd Cayolo with uh, the goal attack. And we, for the second lineup, we have Team South Africa, as we can see over there. Different starting line to what we normally see. Um, Team Precious putting on, and uh, we're getting ready for the start of the match. And uh, as you can see, we have the match on the way. We have Team Namibia versus South Africa. And it's going to be an interesting matchup as we see two of these nations who have shown very good Nepal skills and played a very good game in the past two matches that they had. I mean, Namibia had a great match against Zimbabwe two days ago with a one-point win. And uh, Team South Africa dominating their last match yesterday against Malawi, which was expected to be a bit of a final look. But uh, Team South Africa showing their dominance and showing that they're not here to play. They really want to qualify for this Youth Cup going to Gibraltar next year in 2025. Talk about a team that's firing on all 12 cylinders. That is Team South Africa with the first match here of the day. It is day five at the Nepal World Youth Cup African Qualifier. South Africa is just continuing their winning streak last night with that win against Malawi. And they will sure want to win six out of six with today's match up against Namibia. So I'm looking forward to see this defensive unit because they brought in fa um, favor in that wing defense. And we know how favor is so dangerous and applies so much pressure on the attack of our opposition. So this will sure be an exciting matchup. Now it's 2-1 for South Africa. Uh, thank you, Joe. I mean, talking about a rest day for a Team Namibia, they look fresh. That's why they are keeping up with the intensity of uh, Team South Africa, as we see. But it's the beginning stages of the match. Anything can happen. It's 60 minutes. It's the team that is the most consistent that's going to be able to pull off this game. But Team South Africa showing their class and oh, poor Giada Prince Lu taking a bit of a hard knock over there. But yet again, Lisa, her backup, her sidekick. South it's very nice Africa. to see uh, a bit of a change up South in Team Africa. South Africa's starting line. Thank you so much, we Gina. Are. I am excited to be here with you this morning to take our viewers through this one, uh, which, I mean, I'm really impressed with the way uh, Namibia is staying in it. Yes, the baby approaches are leading South by five Africa. goals, but I've really been impressed with the performance that Namibia has been putting out in this competition. They caused that major upset against Zimbabwe the other day, uh, winning by one goal. Um, but this baby Spa Proches team, I can tell you now, they are such a well oiled machine. South African side normally scoring 15 goals in the first, the first quarter. That's been their run rate. Yesterday they were really tightly pressed against Malawi. They couldn't reach that 50 goal mark. So we'd love to see them really, you know, switching it up and turning the heat on. 
connect a bit quicker as teammates Contact. from Contact. both sides and not play these five balls around that causes a lot of, I mean, your fitness, your ball placement. It ca a lot comes into play with it, but more than anything, it's just a defender's feeding horse. Namibia. And they will hopefully try and push to get another Advantage 15 goals on as they've been defense. getting throughout this Wing tournament. Defense. And we only Wing have defense. under four minutes left to play. To and on cue, Prince Lua secures another goal. You're such a lucky player if you have a, a partner next to you who is there to back you up. Like, ah, Favour coming in for that intercept. Two hands, creating great pressure, pressure for her team to get another opportunity at goal. And Lisa converts. South Africa. Options in that shooting circle for South Africa. Contact. We've seen Pinnacle. the combination of Prince Lou and Ibrinson. We've also seen Andrews and Smith. Yes. I love the agility and the mobility of now the shooting combination of Prince Lou. Oh, good contest on the rebound from Prince Lou. She sinks it then for South Africa. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Offload, looking down court. Namibia. Andrews, let's see if they can, Namibia can get one before this quarter is done. I'm sure Team South Africa will be making sure that they don't get or allow Namibia to get this, this goal by just adding that pressure that they've been doing on the circle. I mean, the confusion that they're causing the Namib Namibian side to get, but... Uh, the goal attack, sneaky one coming through over there, just unable to finish her, her shot. And giving South Africa, just look at the pace that they're moving down court. Less than 10 seconds left of this quarter. Beautiful roll by Lisa, great connection between the two. And unfortunately, it is a goal actually for Team South Africa. Certainly a brilliant start in this first quarter from the baby pro tears. I must say that Namibia though, you know, they're there, but they mustn't let themselves let this gap um, extend. And that's how we end the first quarter then. With South Africa leading 17 goals to four. Kadla Victor gets us underway for the second quarter of this match. Oh, look at that speed. I love the way she dominates the edge of the circle. She, you know, she's Last so um, goal defense penalty. determined to land on that circle's edge before she offloads to the shooters, the, the center Contact. of the South penalty. African inside. side. There we go. Absolutely, Zanele. We spoke about the importance of landing circle edge. Yeah, and I think also she just needs to wait for the goal defense to land and then she must take the shot because uh, at that instance, the goal defense did tap the ball, you know, because yes, Lisa took that yes. shot while the goal defense was in the air. So it's just waiting and making sure she re releases it at the perfect time. Oh, Cagnolo does what she does best, also showing that she's South got Africa. range. It's great to see that uh, the defense is actually on the transverse line, ready to help with the attackers if there's a problem in front. So the, it's really nice to know that you have back players in case there's a problem in front that you aren't able to um, pass the ball to the shooters. And I think that's what Team South Africa has perfected throughout the week, is being able to always have options to offload that ball and not be held or caught for that three-second ball. But, ah, oh, the goalkeeper, what a stunning fly from Namibia. How exceptional was that? Look at that timing and her intercept line was perfect. The way she came in and took that ball clean. But she also says no. She yeah. says not, no, not, no, not today. No, listen, she's been outstanding and consistently so for South Africa. Fissa on yes, that goal are. defense position. It's either she's with Kabuya as the goalkeeper. I Back love to see this combination Back of Bordenstein and Fissa. Also something special, something Off different. That reach of Bordenstein over the shot. Namibia. Really is a massive weapon for this defensive duo at the back. Vargas incorrect and to the attack. Vantage obstruction. Oh, beautiful pressure Sorry. from Team South Africa, Africa. making sure that Namibia yes. makes their own mistakes so that they can capitalize on Contact. that. Contact. The pressure Throw the defense Namibia, of South Africa is putting on Namibia, Namibia is just 
phenomenal but unfortunately there a bit of a buttery hands happening on Andrews for giving Namibia. Namibia another opportunity to be able to score a goal Oh, hands over for South Africa trying to draw the impatience from the Namibians but they're just patiently playing that ball miscommunication there Kanyolo was doing attempting the roll but the ball was released and down court they go then quickly get on that circle's edge looking for the shooters much better passage of play from South Africa and they make it count After the first quarter, we had the score at 17-4, and I think Coach Bobsy was very concerned of uh, his team only scoring four, that he made a lot of changes in the second quarter. Just to confirm, we have on the goal attack, he brought in for Reed, and then on wing attack is now Uyam Pandera. Center is Besser, who's the captain. Goal defense is Muimisi, and then on goalkeeper, he brought in Uamburu. So it's interesting to see that he almost changed the entire team coming back into the second quarter, but yet they've only been able to score two goals. I guess it takes time, you know, for the combination to gel and find its rhythm. You certainly needed solutions to, to that first quarter score that was put up by the South Africans. Saxon goalkeeper. And Bonding. Coach Precious and Tembo opting not to make any changes to her starting lineup. And that is what I've enjoyed about the South African side. The attackers being so good defensively, the way they turn that ball right in that goal third. I mean, you can see that they're coached by two very, very potent defensive coaches in Precious Mtembo and Pumza Maweni. So important that for attackers to contribute from a defensive perspective. Namibia. It just speaks to how strong and how South Africa has been closing them down, not giving them opportunity to get that ball into the shooting circle. And when it has been in the shooting circle, it's been difficult for the shooters of Namibia to convert because of the pressure from Wittenstein and Fissa. Can Cagnolo get that number five? She'll get another opportunity though, but Fissa. Yes. And wouldn't stay goalkeeper second chance. That height and that reach, yes. you know, and that physicality that they bring there has been South proving Africa. to be very difficult for the Nubian shooters to manage. We can see that this quarter is a bit slower in terms of scoring. Uh, Namibia, they might do a bit better than the first quarter because they were only at a four goal. So maybe the changes Coach Bobsy made is making a difference. But looking over at the bench, we have some Namibia players warming up once again, as well as on the South African side. So we only have a, just over four minutes left to play, but I think some changes will be coming into that second half. And hopefully then we can pick up the pace of this match because it's really just getting slow now. Oh, what do you guys think up there in the box? She sends a very strong message to her defenders that don't let me get into that shooting circle because the moment I step in there, that ball is going one way and that's right through the hoop. She's been really consistent for me. Goal defense. And that's a good sign for a player that's preparing to go playing against sub, uh, African teams. That's what you're going to get. You're going to get the physicality. You're going to get the contest, you know, body on body. You need to be strong to take those hits. It only strengthens you, it sharpens you, and you need to make sure that those contacts don't get into your head exactly the way Prince is doing, staying strong, focused in that shooting circle. Plays that their coach has set out for them, and uh, Prince Lu holding the goalkeeper so well. I think that's what she's been doing so greatly in the second quarter, is being able to put her goalkeeper behind her to make sure that her tummy's open and that it's an easy connection for her teammates to be able to find her. Namibia, that's not defense. And they've done so well to keep Namibia to only yes. five goals in this quarter. In 15 minutes, Namibia could only, could only score five goals. Brilliant performance here defensively from South Africa. And they've been able to get that ball down court with speed, precision, and get the scoreboard ticking. Unfortunately, they won't be able to make use of this turnover ball. And that's 
the halftime score then in this game 33 for South Africa and 9 for Namibia it's a lot to play for still for both these teams come the second half of this game and uh, we see South Africa over there dominating this whole match, especially with their attackers being able to turn balls, being able to give their shooters second opportunities for any rebound or any mistake that's happening. So it's great to see the attackers of Team South Africa actually dominating this match rather than waiting for them to turn over the, their, any balls in the defensive end. Yeah, for me, they've just had such great connections. There's such good understanding, ball speed, precision, strong drives onto that circle's edge. Victor's really been on song when it comes to that. And the conversion rate from the shooting combination of Prince Lou and Inverson has really been on song. It's so impressive to see that, you know, this combination can also create the magic that we've seen with other combinations that Co Coach Precious and Tempe has been able to put on. And for me, also something that's been outstanding about this South African side is the ability, you know, to take the tempo up with every quarter. They play so well when it comes to the final quarter. From, from a defensive perspective, they've also been a well-oiled machine. A different defensive combination, though, we see Fissa with Bordenstein there. Just take that look. You know, the reaction, the ability to really put pressure on the shooting combination of Furi and Gagnol of Namibia. I mean, the goalkeeper of South Africa has been leading from behind, making sure that she's communicating exactly where she wants her goal defense and wing defense to be. I mean, Favour coming in for those intercepts in the middle of the court, just causing an upset and making sure that Team Namibia don't find the connection that they've been looking for to make sure that they convert. With Namibia, the end over there, they are struggling a bit to find each other um, on the shooting side of South Africa. The goalkeeper and goal defence just need to actually react a bit more to the ball and cause a bit more direction for the team. And we have the score over here still being for halftime 33 to South Africa and 9 for Namibia. And as we're about to get underway, then Kadla Victor will take us Underway then for this third and championship quarter. No changes from the coach of South Africa, Precious and Tembu. Sticking to her starting combination. Zan, why do you think so? Why do you think Coach Precious is not uh, making any changes? I mean, it's they far ahead, you know, give everyone a chance. That's what we always expect or been saying to our viewers that we just want to see all 12 players. But why has Coach Precious not changed at all? If you think about yesterday, they had a really... The combination that's not on court at the moment played a full match against the, um, Malawi yesterday. It was a very physical game. So I think it's important that she, you know, player managers give them enough time to re really just recover because they still are heading to that final. So it's important for them to yes. be able to get as much time on court as possible. What did your coach say to you coming into the second half? Um, she just told us to be more clinical because um, in the previous half we were not doing um, everything that we were supposed to so we have goals that are coached set out for us and this quarter or this half we just want to focus on like completing the goals that were set out for us. Atkins with the wing attack burb we're looking at center uh, Kayla Damas and Sunal Smith the with the goal shooter burb so there could be some changes and the captain Nima Tangari with the wing defense burb there could be some changes then that could be rolled in by coach Precious and Tembu. Ingerson aims, falls short, but the good rebound taken by Prince Lou. Um, Zan, I want to talk about, um, I mean, we've been talking about the shooters this whole time. It'll be interesting to, to see and hear your take on I mean, the yeah. shooting average. Van take up stretch in the defense. You see now, she's thing. also choosing not to take the shots. She's opting to rather get let Prince Lou be the one to convert. I think she just wants to give herself some time. She's such a strong attacker, so smart. Her court intelligence, you know, the expressions on the coaches' faces. 
not looking too Bantam pleased Bantam with the performance Bantam that maybe has been Bantam putting out here. But on the side of South Africa, even though they are ahead and, they tr and they're leading by quite a huge margin, Coach Precious and Tim is still not happy with the quality and the standard of the performance. South He's looking Africa. for clinical play, clinical execution. And uh, we get a tip from Namibia again, giving them another shot at goal. Joe, what are you seeing from your side there? Just looking over at the benches, you know, I already see that both teams have their bench players warming up. So I think there might be some changes coming in, especially also for Namibia. They're starting to find their rhythm now, but they only scored six goals at this stage. And we know they started off with only four, then adding five. So it's already at six and they got a turnover. So hopefully they will build momentum in this third quarter and continue with that into the final one. But the coach might still choose to make some changes because like we said, the same side with South Africa and Zanela, you said it yourself, it's those those, those irrate man it's the irrate and it's too high on both sides I think so going back into the fourth quarter I think both coaches will have a chat with their players just to remind them that keeping possession is the most important thing can't agree with you can't agree more with you Joe Prince even though fatigue is starting to set in you must either you know maybe just drop the tempo a bit instead of playing fast just making sure that you keep that error count down and she's so composed, she's so calm, her demeanor, you know, she makes it look so easy. Here's another chance, 10 seconds to go. Unfortunately, prevented from, from Namibia. Atkins looks into the shooting circle, opts to play the reset ball though. Yeah, you oh, can see where well, she knew that the time was up and they're having a conversation about it. It's all smiles. And uh, hand claps there from the South Africans. And that's the score then come the, the end of the third quarter. South Africa leading 46 goals to 17. And uh, we are starting the last quarter of this match. Team South Africa set us off, but we see there's a few changes that needs to happen. Is this the technical time called for swapping on court that we're seeing that Namibia has finally perfected and no one has to be called off court because they called the wrong time for the wrong thing? Uh, so it's good to see that we, we are playing within the rules and understanding the rules of a Nepal. Also looking at those changes being made by South Africa. Smith then makes her way into that goal shooter position. Damas will take the center. Atkins remains on wing attack. Contact knee goalkeeper. Penalty pass. Contact push goal defense. Both players out of play now. Step up goalkeeper. Besides goal defense, play. Hold time. Um, okay, that is intimidation. We mustn't do it. We mustn't step on the floor. On intimidation. Not to step on the. She says she mustn't step on the floor. You know, when she's trying to defend the player. Oh, she falls short, Sunal Smith. And she really had a tough time yesterday against that Malawi uh, outfit. They were extremely physical. And I love how Coach Precious and Temple kept on court and said, you know, she must find solutions for herself. Commotion there for the defenders of Namibia to make sure that they turn the ball. Like we've been saying throughout this game, that the attacking force of South Africa has been the front line of the defense for them to be able to correct their mistakes. Clear instructions there from the umpire. Speaking about Damas and her contribution defensively as a center, so spectacular. I mean, people don't even know that she's also a very brilliant goal defense. That's how versatile this player is. So now Smith makes this one count. They would want to close off on a high here. She falls short though, Ingerson, but the good contest on the rebound from Smith. Penalty. South Africa. It's good to see her still running with the same intensity. Lisa Emerson. Let's see if she can convert this one. Oh, excellent, exceptional, the crowd love it. The applause, the standing ovation. 
for this young player on that goal attack position for South Africa. That's exactly what she needs to do. She needs to wait for the goal defense to land and then take that shot. So collected, lucky cucumber. South Africa. Oh, brilliant off-road from Tanyolo to Furi. Can she sink it? Kabuya tries to prevent the shot. Distance is fine. And Furi falls short again. That's what pressure does, you know. She was putting herself under tremendous pressure, taking that shot quickly. Oh, Andrews looks for Smith. Oh, my goodness. It's just the commotion. It was a brilliant end to this match. So much excitement in the final stages of this game. The coach of Namibia standing up, applauding, happy with the effort from her side. This is how we end this game then. South Africa 61 and Namibia 25. Forensics found a small amount of DNA and ran it. It's Lucy Arthur's. Can't be hers. She's been missing for five years. Maybe this is the lead that brings her home. We're looking for this girl. Have you seen her? I cannot help you. Lincoln, these people are lying to us. Witnesses lie all the time. But lying to stop us from finding a missing girl, that's a new one. Lincoln Ryan, Hunt for the Bone Collector. Saturdays, 8.30 on 2. The modern pentathlon promises to be one of the most challenging and picturesque events at Paris 2024. The sport is divided into two sections. First, athletes swim 200 meters, fence in a series of one minute bouts, and complete a show jumping course on a randomly chosen horse, all the while scoring points to determine their starting position for the laser run. This involves four rounds of shooting laser pistols at targets 10 meters away, each round followed by an 800 meter run. The first athlete to cross the line in the grounds of the majestic Palace of Versailles wins the gold medal.